Hey, in this video, we're gonna find out if the Kit Fox is the best bang for your buck. So let's go talk to Brandon and find out more about the Kit Fox and see if it's the bush plane for you. Hey guys, I'm here at the Kit Fox um, site with Brandon and he is gonna walk us through the Kit Fox, which is the STI model. So why don't you walk me through, starting at the front, working your way back, and really seeing if this is a, maybe a good fit for myself or for somebody else who's interested in getting a small bush plane that's very capable. So the Series 7 we have is a Super Sport package, an STI package, as well as a Speedster package, clipped wing version and fared and a little faster. The uh, plane behind me is the, the STI, so it's a Stole Inspired is how we came up with that acronym. So we, we lean a little more towards the extreme stole side of things. We're not out trying to win competitions or do anything, but we do want to have better performance going into some of these backcountry fields and, and uh, off, off airport landings, things like that. It gives you a lot more options with the uh, bigger tires, bigger wings, slows us down a little bit on approach and slows down our stall speed a little. So with engines and things like that, this has the Rotex 915, which is turbocharged. Pretty much, can you throw any kind of engine that you want in one of these, or do you have things that you recommend? So there's actually 14 different engines supported from the factory. So if somebody likes a light combing or a Continental, put it on here, it'll totally fit. We love the Rotax family of engines. We're, uh, we're big proponents of them. The 915 does not disappoint ever. Gives you all the power you need, all the power you could possibly want. I've been in this airplane uh, with this combination. I've been to 18,000 feet with it, and uh, it just performs so beautifully. So uh, it gives you everything you need in, in takeoff, uh, clearing trees, clearing terrain, all that stuff. It's, it's really a great combination with the STI wing. Now I see this has like the three-bladed prop, where I've seen others have two. Yeah. Um, was, what was the thought behind putting with a three-blade? So some of the, the blade choice depends on how you're going to use it. So in this case, we like the three-blade. The harmonics with the fuselage work a little better with a three-blade prop. If you're looking to pull stumps out of the ground, two-blade's going to gonna pull you out of the, the hole a little quicker. So if all you're doing is competing, maybe a two-blade might be a better option for you. But there are, uh, you know, a uh, lot of different options. This one here is the MT, uh, constant speed prop that pairs nicely with the 915. Gives you kind of the best of everything. Gives you a good hole shot, gives you good cruise speed once you're up to altitude. Um, and it's quiet, it's smooth, it's well built. There's just nothing to complain about with this prop. Now, so what is one of these like cruise at, like in a, just an average scenario at whatever, maybe like let's say six to 8,000 feet or something like that. If you were wanting to come to Oshkosh, what can you expect for like performance? So uh, we like true air speeds because it kind of levels the playing field. In the case of the STI, big wing, big landing gear, big tires, all that stuff, it's gonna be a 100 mile an hour airplane all the time. The uh, Super Sport, which is behind me in the blue and white, that airplane will uh, basically do 115 to 120 true all the time. And then uh, the, the Speedster, clipped wing version of that's gonna be even higher. And our VNE is about 140. so. Uh, okay. The speedster will be pretty close to that all the time. And what's like the average approach speed for like the STI compared to this, um, the other one over yeah, there? Yeah, great question. So normally in a super sport we're going to approach at about a 60 mile an hour approach speed. The STI you can slow that down to 50. So it gives you about a 10 mile an hour advantage on the, on the low end. It gives you more time when you're going into tight spaces. You can just kind of plan your approach a little better and uh, touchdown speeds, of course, going to be a little slower. Why don't you walk me through the landing gear first, because that looks to be the closest, yep. and then we'll just work our way back from there. So this is the Kit Fox Cabane V gear. Uh, it's available in a couple of di different configurations. We actually have it with a spring and a uh, shock uh, configuration, which this one has the shock. It dampens a little more than the spring does. The spring kind of pushes you back. So if you bounce your landing, that's going to push you back in the air. The shock will kind of take up some of that. And what about this one over here? Is that what the one you're talking about? Or is that, that's the Grove gear, yeah, is so it? This one is a Grove aluminum spring gear. Uh, very robust gear. It, it'll never break. It'll never um, you know, fail on you. It might yield, it might bend, but it's never going to leave you stranded. So Brandon, why don't you tell me about this wing as opposed to the one over there? Because this looks like it has maybe just a little bit different shape or maybe the ends are a little bit different. Yeah. How is this one different? So we have a longer wing tip on this one to start. That's usually what people notice right off the bat. It's a longer wing tip by about 10 inches. And uh, you know that gives a little more stability in our slow speed uh, flying. Additionally, it's deeper in cord, with more under camber, and it's a taller profile. And so all those things combined gives us you know more drag, but also better lift and better slow speed performance. The, uh, the wing was developed by us. It is still a riblet airfoil, just like our standard uh, Super Sport uh, profile is. Um, the Super Sport profile has been around for 
you know, since the Model 4. So in that regard, it's a very reliable airfoil. We know it, we love it, it works great, and uh, we know what we can get out of it. We tried this one and we were real pleased with it. Um, the first time we did it, we actually thought, well, maybe we'll put slats on it. This wing has performed so well that we don't need slats, that we don't need the complication of slats, we don't need the, the extra weight of the slats, complexity, sure. money, all the stuff that goes into that. So Now, do all the VGs come standard? VGs are standard on the STI kit. Okay. Uh, optional on the Super Sport kit, but we haven't noticed a, a, as dramatic a difference in the Super Sport. It's already such a good airfoil sure. that the VGs didn't really help it a whole lot. I noticed that like there's something different here, the flaperons. Like for someone who's not familiar with those, that is different. Like what's the advantage, or maybe why did you guys go with maybe that design over just the standard aileron and flaps? Sure. Uh, people are used to aileron and flaps because they see them in, in a lot of the certified world. Flaperons are detached and away from the airfoil. And the biggest advantage that they're going to give you is they're, they're full span, so it makes the roll control very responsive, even through the stall. So your wing could be stalled and, and the flaperon is out flying in its own air. And so a lot of times if you have a, a wind to pick up a wing, that, that aileron is going to allow you to put it back down very easily. So if you were to put the flaps down now, would you mind doing that so sure. we can see what it actually does? Yep. In the case of the flaperons, they work as roll control. But as you introduce the flaperons, you still get roll control to do that. What you're going to find, the biggest difference between a traditional flap and a flaperon is we only go about 20 degrees of flaps. Whereas a lot of the certified world, you're going to see you know, 30 and 40 degree flaps on, on a landing approach. Oh, right? you're only getting about 20 about degrees. About 20 degrees, okay. yeah. But they're full span. Again, remember, yeah. you're getting a lot of surface there moving down. That also uh, makes for a little flatter approach. So a lot of people might be used to a real steep approach, kind of dropping that 40 degrees of flaps and, and a quick descent. We're going to use other tools like a slip. Okay. And with flapperons, a slip is just absolutely majestic. You, you can, okay. you can, our rudder's very responsive, so you can get this airplane pretty, pretty well sideways, descend very quickly, pull out of it, and, and do, right. a, do a forward slip to land. Just going into like brakes and tires, things like that. Obviously, you can kind of throw whatever you want because it's experimental. Yeah. Um, if someone were to purchase a kit, does it come with something standard from you guys, or is that up to the customer from the get-go? Yeah, so we include uh, the Grove. Um, heavy-duty brakes and wheels that come in the kit. Uh, if somebody wanted to do something else, we can omit those from the kit, and they just they can source whatever they'd like outside of that. There, there okay. are other options, so uh, oh, yeah. we like those because we, we source absolutely everything we can in U.S. manufacturing. So there's very few things that we actually source outside of the U.S. All of our steel is sourced here. All of our aluminum is made in Texas and uh, Arizona, and um, all of our labor's here. So we just do everything we can stateside keep all the all the control we can within our own manufacturing facility all right so here's the interior it looks like these seats are fixed let's say someone who's let's say five eight as opposed to someone who's six four or something how can this configure for each different pilot the uh, the kit box cockpit is very well uh, laid out and it, and it complements all kinds of different heights uh, we're all built differently and, and somebody that's five eight may want to pull these rudder pedals a little closer to them and they just simply operate with this lever, and then they'll still function independently at different different uh, settings. The uh, it is a stick and rudder aircraft, so you've got stick controls. If someone is, you know, let's say they're all legs and short torso, we can put them up in the airplane using a thicker cushion, so they can see over the panel a little better. So that's all very much customizable. Uh, the seat pan is fixed; it's a fiberglass seat pan, and it stays in place, and uh, we don't have to rely on rails and, and all the extra weight of adjustable seats and things like that. Now can you fly with the doors open? You can fly with the doors open. A lot of people will just take them off. If you get going too fast, uh, the doors want to pull up into the into the wing. But uh, yeah, the doors uh, usually about 80 miles an hour and slower. The doors can be open. You can get that open cockpit feel, fresh air in your face. And we actually off offer a pre-configured instrument panel that uh, wire harness and Garmin setup that people can buy from us. But it is a large panel, so you can fit a 10-inch and a 7-inch G3X in here, in addition to your radio autopilot control, you know, separate GPS like we have here. Uh, we do a center throttle. Some people ask about doing end throttles, but we do a center throttle so it's not in the way of getting, you know, egress in and out of the airplane. Okay. Now with Rotex, I'm unfamiliar. It's just one. There's no mixture. There's no nothing just because it's all just fuel injected. So yeah, you, you don't deal with mixture at all on a Rotax engine, even in the case of a carbureted Rotax. Uh, it's still just a single lever. The prop is controlled through this box here. So this is a, uh, a stock flight systems uh, controller that, that talks to the governor and it's reading engine information and, 
and it keeps the prop happy all the time. If you wanted a manual prop, you could put that in. Well, let's talk about safety just with like your your frame and maybe some different things that you've built into it. I'm thinking maybe for a rollover for what people are going to want to use this for. Sure. Backcountry stuff, probably a lot of inexperienced backcountry pilots, and they flip it over. Like what what's built into the frame for safety wise? Okay. So the, the frame is uh, pre-welded, we, we welded it at the factory, uh, 4130 chromoly steel. And that's just like the roll cages they put around NASCAR drivers. So the, it's good enough for those guys going 200 miles an hour and they hit a wall, it's protecting the driver. We want that same protection for our pilots and our builders. We want to be able to have them feel safe in the airplane. Different than a uh, aluminum skinned airplane, this is going to provide a lot more structure around them. Uh, okay. In our uh, 38 years of, of building kit foxes, we've never had an in-flight structural failure reported. So the uh, design is very solid, uh, the build goes together so well that all different skill levels can actually build the airplane and, and still have a successful flying uh, machine that, that's going to protect them. And what's an average useful load that people could expect? So the uh, the Kit Fox is a 1550 gross weight airplane. So it's it's a little higher than, than what you'd see in most of the light sport aircraft. We, uh, we look at different variables in the build such as the engine and the avionics options and all, all the different things you can put on it but a lot of the times the weight is going to come in about 800 pounds on, a, on an empty weight of the aircraft so in that regard it's going to almost carry all of its own weight and useful load so that means you can go full fuel you can go two guys my size and still be able to put some baggage in the back our baggage area is actually 48 inches deep and uh, two feet wide we uh, we have the ability to put up to 150 pounds of baggage back there and uh, still be well within our CG range so you can safely fly the airplane. So in all the seven uh, Series 7 models we have, uh, you have a trimmable stabilizer. And so that gives you a lot of authority plus your elevator. Uh, so when you go to trim, uh, everything's rock solid so you're not fighting anything on, on final approach. Um, the elevator is a little larger on the 7 than some of the earlier models. So again, it gives you a lot of authority, especially with a heavier engine up front, like the 915 or any of the, the Lycoming Continental options. Here we also have the T3 tailwheel and the uh, Alaska Bushwheel 3200 series of tailwheel. Really rugged, really robust. Because we're landing off airport, we're doing some of the backcountry strips in Idaho. We just want you know whatever we can put back there to protect the uh, the airframe itself. And the T3 uh, works quite well for taking a lot of the bumps and rocks and things like that. Uh, take that energy out instead of transferring it up into the uh, tail frame. Okay. Uh, one of the things about the Kit Fox, the rudder is is really authoritative, and so in a heavy crosswind, uh, gives the pilot a lot of confidence to be able to handle that and manage that, uh, as well as our flap runs. Uh, allow us to really handle a, a high crosswind. So we've had some uh, pretty high double digit numbers that we've landed in. Uh, usually with a crosswind component in the Kit Fox, the pilot's gonna fall short of what the airplane's capable of doing. Okay, sure. Okay, Brandon, tell us, what can someone expect as far as maybe a build, like a personal build to just a regular standard? I mean, not like luxury build, sure. but I'm looking for something, and I think a lot of other people are too, is for something under $100,000, is that doable with this or maybe what's an average customer price that they can expect? Sure. We've seen, we've seen people build them using used engines and used avionics and so you, you can get under that 100000 mark pretty easily if you went that route. Um, 100000 is about the, about the average for a super sport kit with a moderately priced engine. We see people go way higher than that with complex avionics and, and turbocharged engines, big props, big tires, all that stuff. So, you know, there is a, a pretty broad range of what you can do, but we, we've had people build them pretty inexpensively. Uh, the ones on the used market, generally there's, there's some to be had for a good deal. We just always tell people, do your research. Know what you're buying, know what you can get from the factory for replacement parts or anything like that, but just know, know the airplane, have somebody look at it, have somebody that's familiar with them go through it and, and really know what you're getting. All right, thank you so much, Brandon. I really do appreciate your My time yeah. walking me through this and giving us all just a little insight on the Kit Fox. For Thanks, sure. guys. See you next time.